It's a very good thing. Yes. And, and, and I'm not just saying that because we need money, we need help. It's a good thing. There is joy in giving. That's where some of the best pleasure comes from. Uh, I think, I, I gotta, Mark, I have to give you that chance as the president and CEO of the Community Housing Network uh, about uh, some of the, uh, the major issues that uh, are affecting you, how you're addressing these issues. And, and if you find that, that uh, people are uh, volunteering, uh, if you've seen a rise or a fall, and frankly, the one they're really keying on right now is that what brought you to the organization and, and what's keeping you staying there. Well, I started out um, actually volunteering myself when I was in high school at a place called the Plymouth Center for Human Development, which was a state-operated um, facility for people with uh, disabilities. And um, that was a experience that really left an impression on me. I wound up, uh, uh, after college, working for the state of Michigan, uh, uh, creating residential settings, housing for people with developmental disabilities and closing, helping to close uh, state-operated institutions all over the place. Uh, there used to be thousands of people with disabilities living in the institution, and now there are literally less than 100, I believe. So the state of Michigan was very, very successful in helping people with disabilities to get out into the community, but um, we really needed to, to do more work at making sure they had safe, decent, affordable housing. That's what attracted me to the work, and that's what's kept me in it uh, for as long as I have been. Um, I started another nonprofit before um, going to Community Housing Network called Spring Hill Housing Corporation. I'm still affiliated with it. But uh, uh, we just see the need every day for uh, people with disabilities to become included, valuable members of, of their communities. And uh, there are lots of people out there who are willing to help with it. Um, we, uh, uh, whether that's uh, becoming a friend or a mentor to a person with a disability who lives in your neighborhood or your apartment building, uh, all the way to you know writing the checks that we do appreciate for our fundraising events that uh, enable us to to do our work. It, it's uh, very resource intensive to you know apply for the grants and 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 secure the kinds of uh, programs that we um, operate. And volunteers have been wonderfully uh, uh, helpful and beneficial in, in helping to do that. And it's just like uh, um, my colleagues have said that uh, uh, spreading the word is a big part of the battle. I mean, it's not going to be everybody's uh, primary issue, you know, housing for people with disabilities, but uh, for the people who, who do find it a, an appealing cause, uh, they've really come through for us in a lot of ways. I, I'm going to go to my uh, my co-host, uh, David Boyle, president, CEO of National City, Michigan, and, and uh, turn uh, one of the questions around in that, what do you look for uh, in a collaboration with a charity? What what When you want to partner up with somebody, what are you looking for, David? Well, we look to the mission of the organization first and foremost, Paul. We have a, we have a philanthropic philanthropic um, I guess kind of a strategy to do a couple of things and give and back to the community, giving back and all sure. that, but but meeting human need. You know, there's there's enough there's enough need out there, and what we look to is is to find organizations that actually do that, meet a need that that otherwise may not get met somewhere. And so, when we look at those, that's one thing we look for. And the second thing we look for, quite frankly, is the effectiveness of the organization. It's it's there aren't enough dollars out there. Um, to fund everything that we get asked to fund. So what's really important for me is, is the organization effective and are they making a difference? And if they are, um, let's find a way to leverage the resources we can give them, both financially and with our time, to make them more effective. And, and I think we will find over time here in Southeast Michigan that the organizations that aren't as effective as they probably should be are gonna have troubles mm -hmm. surviving which is going to put more burden on mm -hmm. the organizations that are more effective. So, yeah. you know, it's the it's the it's the theory of the strong will survive. So, mm -hmm. that's really what we're looking to do. And and obviously, we like to have business relationships with these individuals, with the organizations, and that's a that's an ancillary benefit that we we look to. But um, it's really meeting human need in this case. What if I gave you a wish list, each of you? What what would be 
What would be top on your, your wish list? That's a good question. That's, a, that's a really good question. That's an wow. excellent <laughs> question. Because there are a lot of people that will hear yeah. this. So I, you, I, yeah. And I'll start off. I think not to have to worry about um, grant fundraising. Um, most of my time is spent making sure that the dollars are coming in the door to operate the programs. You sound like someone running for office. I know. and that, <laughs> but I'm not say. doing that. I'm not doing say. that. They all say. I just but, wish I didn't but, have to raise but the money. Real, but the real challenge right now, because of the economic times, we've had to shift how we do business. And our need is greater than what we can deliver. And so a challenge is just not being able to worry about those dollars. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here going, as soon as I leave, I got to make a couple of phone calls. I got to do this. I got to do that to make sure that I can meet some of our physical needs, mm -hmm. um, you know, financial needs rather. Um, so I, on my wish list would be able to have the funding in place that we could do the service and not have to necessarily, when I say worry about the dollars, um, just enough dollars to operate. Well, but you do have know. to worry about but the I dollars. But I do if yeah. I want to keep my doors open. So that's a challenge right now. And, and I don't know the answer. Because as we move, we're bricks and mortars, as I said, and all of our neighborhoods are being affected by what's happening with the foreclosure that's taking place. It doesn't matter if you're in a low income or a neighborhood of $400,000, $500,000 houses. Um, so that would be on my wish list, to be able to deliver a service without worrying about finding the dollars to pay the staff, I mean, with insurance costs going up, and I'm doing my little plug, um, you know, health benefits and, and just trying to, to maintain day to day has been really a challenge when you have lives that are dependent on you. I was just going to say, uh, Linda, if you had not done your little plug, you wouldn't be doing your job. Exactly. This exactly. is a wonderful opportunity. Exactly, and, and I appreciate that. But but that is that is on my wish list, and, and just to be able to, to continue doing what we do. I think it's probably one of the reasons that David wanted you to be on the program exactly. today here. Yeah. We're uh, on uh, WJR.com, National City Roundtable. It's our fifth get-together, uh, hosted, sponsored by uh, the National City Michigan. David Boyle, the president and CEO, co-host. I'm Paul W. Smith, and we're here with Linda Smith, who you just heard, executive director of USNAP BAC, Nonprofit Housing Corporation. I'm going to let, uh, who feels more ready to talk? <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, go to, for words. I'll go to, yeah. uh, I'll go to uh, Kurt, uh, and uh, executive director of the Penrickton Center for Blind Children, uh, up next to, uh, in fact, tell me what's on your wish list and, and tell our listeners what's on your wish list. Well, again, we're very, very fortunate because we get solely supported through private donations. All of our food is donated. All of our paper products are donated. So we're very, very help. You know, that's always a constant need. Um, if I had a, a, a wish list, I would have three major things on that wish list. One, um, to the detriment of David, um, I'd love to pay off our mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> we would like you to. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, uh, bank, yeah. Banking yeah. has changed. Yeah. They'd love to see you be able to we pay off your mortgage. You However, it, it, it's, it, it, and the nice thing is, is because of donations, we did a building renovation, and it was uh, a $2 million renovation. We only owe $30,000, and so that's, wow. that's really great. So, that great. so we'd love to be able to pay David off, and th so that's number one. Number two, is a person. I'd love to have a person uh, to help us out. Um, we do a program called Active Learning. This program uh, teaches other people, uh, other professionals uh, and parents about programs for blind, multi-disabled children. Uh, currently, our assistant director does a lot of that, and we'd love to be able to have a person to do things like that. Um, third, and this is just, it just came up uh, a couple days ago, uh, when we did the building renovation, we had these lights, and we have these fluorescent lights, and just about every week, one of them goes out. And it's just not the light, it's the ballast. And so we're talking about eventually having a donation to replace all the lighting at Penrington. I mean, because it's, you know, it's important. Yeah, you know yeah. what? That person <laughs> might have come to WJR.com <laughs> and just heard and may be able to, so to be in touch. Before we, before we leave, don't let me forget to ask you all how people can get involved sure. in your organization and how they can get sure. in touch with you.